Subsequent to yesterday's suspension, there was a press conference that was called by those who were briefed, and all sorts of accusation was made at that press conference. And we'd like to clear the air on some of those issues. And one of the issues that was ventilated yesterday is that something corrupt happened in the 2023 subvention. I have in my hands a copy of the 2023 subvention for you to peruse based on our spending. Um, this information can be had four projects for last year, and that is Sharper Square, which we did, and you can fact check yourself. We would have completed that street. We had a re another rehabilitation of another street that's in Kadaraville that was completed 100%. And we had a project for the basketball court because we believe that. We need to do something for youth and social development. So we would have placed on our project for last year approximately six million dollars to be expended on the basketball court. And that includes the fencing or the refencing of the basketball court. And you can also fact check that. The fence was completed, but a resurfacing process of the court was not done in an acceptable manner. The members of the works committee, which includes both from both sides of the aisle, would have visited and we were dissatisfied with the quality of work based on what was given to the contract to be completed. Um, in advance, we would have paid the contractor a sum of 45% of the contract sum. The contract sum was $4,747,000. $1,848. And we would have paid the contractor for 5% of that. And we did not pay because when we visited with the contractor, we would have we all would have stated our dissatisfaction with the level or the quality of work that was done. Um, we wrote the contractor on several occasions. We invited the contractor to our statutory meeting. Um, he promised to complete or to remedy the defects. Unfortunately, those were not done. To date, and what we had to do, because we were dealing with a contract, and after we would have reminded him on more than three occasions for the work to be completed, he had failed to complete it, and we would have terminated that contract. Um, the next 55% of the contract sum is still with the municipality. And we are working to see how well we can get that aspect of the project completed so that we could have, so that we can complete last year's subvention. So the document is here for your perusal. Um, unlike misinformation that has been peddled um, about the project, um, you can check with the with us and you'll see that. The payment vouchers and all of that can be readily available to you as, as well as any other member of the public to verify what we say. So responding to comments made in a subsequent press briefing where persons were alleging the PNC-led municipality never had, never had an opposition. The world, GCOM, can attest to this fallacious statement of which I find to be nothing more than a circus show. When a sitting councillor can assert there was never an opposition, coming in as councillor in 2018, we would have worked in harmony with certain PPP councillors. So, I really don't understand how persons
can be so glaring in their remarks to say they've never had an opposition. So to, to see the mayor of New Amsterdam being demonized in a press conference where due process was followed via Rule 9 H, it was quite appalling. And so, as mayor of New Amsterdam, I will not allow elements, elected councillors, to bring the mayor and council of New Amsterdam into this dispute. Councillors must conduct their affairs in a manner worthy, in a manner worthy of the office. I would have seen a list with allocation of lands being one of the topics for discussion at the press conference. I dare to say, yes, coming in as mayor would have afforded me the opportunity to serve this sum of New Amsterdam as chairman of the Lands Committee. To date, what I can safely say, those lands that were allocated, they were in the last council. And based on my knowledge, based on the rule of the land committee, one plot of land for person. So what this councillor failed to let the general public know while two proposed lands were allocated to this sitting councillor based on the rule this sitting councillor can only be allocated one plot of land. Additionally if we are to peruse that very list of allocation, you will find the sitting councillor's children being the beneficiary of council's land. So if we are to be preaching accountability, transparency and accountability, let us be true with ourselves. Don't try to paint a one-sided affair picture. What you may see happening on that very document, not every person that was allocated plots of land completed their payments. 